All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to uh, the second episode of Corey Means Business on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. Obviously, we still got this coronavirus thing going. So I want to make today's uh, topic intertwined with the coronavirus and exactly how we're going to deal with it as a business. And the aspect I want to talk about today is how are we going to deal with our sales funnel? As I said in the last episode, obviously, it's a great time to make adjustments, get better. Again, like, like I said, all successful businesses use times like this to actually improve processes, get better at things. So that not only to whom they still thrive when financial situations like this happen, but they can also start uh, uh, really setting themselves up for when it turns around again, they're really going to explode their growth. So today we're going to talk about how to, you know, how to handle your sales funnel right now with the coronavirus and how to really set it up so that as you go forward, uh, you're going to have the ability to explode your sales right now. And then as the economy picks back up to really explode them. So Two of the, two of the uh, clients that I coached today with regards to sales funnels were both construction companies. So I'm going to kind of use the construction company uh, example here a lot. I know that a lot of you are construction and in construction and similar industries. So we'll make it kind of relevant to construction. Although 99.9% .9 of everything that I talk about, everything I do is completely applicable to all industries. There isn't much variation when it comes to proper delivery of sales funnels, marketing funnels, uh, and then ultimately fulfilling to your client. It kind of works the same in, in all businesses. So while I'll be using uh, construction a little bit, a little bit more, uh, understand that this is really applicable to all industries. So it will be applicable to you as well. So one of my clients today with the coronavirus, obviously, uh, a lot of people are freaked out about it. Uh, I think it's overblown myself. I think that uh, people are taking it a little too seriously. The numbers don't add up to this doomsday virus. Matter of fact, they are kind of looking to be less than the H1N1 that nobody really even paid attention to in 2009. Uh, the numbers are looking to actually be less than that as far as mortality rates and so forth. So while I think it's overblown, unfortunately, the media and even the government is in a really good job of making this like the, the next doomsday. Uh, but it isn't. We'll get past it. Don't, don't worry. Uh, 2008 happened. A lot of people, you know, weren't prepared for it and, and got their butts handed to them. And so that's why this time we're going to be prepared because we're going to be learning how to do this stuff so that we can, again, not only survive when, when, when uh, the times get a little difficult, but we're going to thrive when they get difficult. And that's really the key. That's really the key to sustainability of a business over the long haul and the ability to make your money and guarantee that your income does not fall off, whether the economy is good or bad. You can make money in both. That's the point. So we're going to make money in both economies, good and bad. Once you get these processes down, you'll be able to control your, 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 uh, your revenue streams, control your sales processes to where, again, you won't have to have any fear. I have zero fear. Uh, again, I, I know I'm going to make even more money because I'm going to bat down the hatches and get my processes uh, really uh, sharp. So I'll still thrive. And then when the economy turns and it will, I'll be even better off because I, I really uh, got everything narrowed down and, and pinned down. So let's jump into it. I've got it pulled up on the big screen here. Uh, this is off my website. CoreyGeneSuccess.com, by the way. Uh, this is one of the blogs that I have on there about how to, uh, how to properly create a sales funnel to explode your sales growth. Now, again, this is going to apply to any and all businesses. Uh, it's just not going to be for our example of the construction, but we're going to use that for now. And really, the, the premise behind a, a proper sales funnel is what you have to understand is the why. Why do you have it? Why do you have a sales funnel? You have a sales funnel because you want to be able to predict the level of top-line revenue that your, your company is going to do. If you're just literally showing up to your business every day and saying, man, I hope for the best. I hope today some customers call and I get some jobs and, uh, and, and, I, and I make some money. Well, you're, you're already done. You already lost before you even showed up. You cannot approach your business that way. You have to have a very predictable set structure for your sales funnel. Now, a sales funnel is always going to start with marketing. Not to be confused, sales and marketing are completely different. But a sales funnel is going to start with your marketing funnel. Now, we are going to talk a little bit about marketing funnels today, 
but I want to really emphasize the sales funnel aspect of it because I think a lot of you already have solid client lists. I know the two clients that I coached today already had solid client lists. The problem they're having is they're having problems getting sales out of the current client list due to either the fact that they're, those people are scared of the coronavirus or they are fearful that they will not uh, have enough money, so they're hesitant to spend any money right now. And this is typical no matter what kind of financial crisis we have. People are going to be afraid of uh, exposure to the financial crisis or the cause for it, as well as they're going to be worried about do they have enough money. That's always going to be the case. It was the case in 2008. It was the case in 2001. It was the case in 1993. I've been through several of these, as you can tell. Um, that's always the case. So how do we deal with that as a business? How do we still get our, our customers to, to, to saddle up? Well, it's very simple. You have to have a predictable sales funnel. So the two, the two businesses that I coached today is I, I basically took them and I said, look, stop worrying about that a certain percentage of your customers are not wanting to do business with you right now. What you got to focus on is you got to get penetration into your customer list to get the ones that will. Now, most businesses, and this is ridiculous, but this is the truth, most businesses don't even penetrate their client list. For instance, I'll do, I'll have people come to my home and my business and service me for whatever uh, that I have done. And I never hear, never hear from them again. I mean, I guess they're expecting me to call them when I need them. Uh, and most businesses are that way. That's crazy. You have to, first of all, to have any kind of a sales funnel, you have to have capture of your client list. So you have to know everyone you've ever done a, a job for, anyone you've ever sold a product for, you have to capture their information first and foremost. You got to get their email, you got to get their name, you got to get their phone number. And then you got to keep some kind of a record using a CRM, a client uh, uh, management software, uh, to be able to know what they bought from you. It's very helpful to know what they bought before so you know how much it was, whether they were a good customer, a bad customer, uh, you know, whether they spent money easily or whether they were, you know, kind of tight wads. You need to have some notes about that. It doesn't have to be completely, uh, you know, a, a, a microscopic look at the, the customer, but at least some basics so you know what that customer is. So our, your business should have all of your clients together in a CRM. They're so cheap. You can get cloud-based CRMs, $20 a month, $15 a month. Um, constant contact will kind of work as that. It'll let you put notes in and, and, and all the names and numbers uh, in it. Constant contact's really good. 50 bucks a month. You can put thousands of, of customers in there and keep track of them, email them. So that's really good. There's tons of services out there like that, but I, I kind of like constant contact. Uh, I'm going to have to charge them for that plug. Um, so once you have your client list captured, well, now you can control it. So now when, when times get tough like this, we know that we have a client list. Let's just say it's a list of 100 people that you've done work for or you've sold things to. Now, are all 100 of those people going to buy from you today? No, but there is a percentage of them that will. The trick is, is to penetrate that list in order to find the ones that will do business with you. And I don't care if there's something going on like the coronavirus or financial collapse. There is still a certain percentage of that list that's going to be happy to do business with you. There are a certain percentage of people that just aren't freaked out by anything bad that happens. A lot of people have money. A lot of people prepare for bad times like this to where it's not even something they even think about. Um, there's plenty of people that have tons of money in the bank. They're not worried that they're not going to be able to get paid for a couple of months. There's people that got tons of uh, canned food stocked up. They're not worried. They're not going to be able to go to the grocery store and get food. Uh, and they're not really worried they're going to get the virus. So when you look at that aspect of it, again, plenty of your client list or your customer list is not afraid to do business. What you need to do is you need to penetrate that list so that you can find them. Great way to do it, again, email campaigns. Uh, you can do uh, the constant contact where you just send out an email saying, hey, I know times are a little, little scary, a little tough. What you have to do is you have to have control of your client list. And what that means is, is you're going to have your client list and your CRM. You're going to have it ready to be emailed, called, text, okay? You got to understand, you need to reach out to your clients all three ways. So once you have them in this, in this uh, client management software, whether it's constant contact or another one, you've got to have, again, the phone number, their cell phone preferably, which I don't know anybody that's using a house phone anymore, but cell phones and emails. And what you're going to do is you're going to email them and you're going to also call and text both. Email, call, and text. What we're trying to accomplish at this point is we want list penetration. And what that means is, is again, we want to get in contact with as many of this uh, people of this list as we can 
to let them know that we're in business, we're operating, and we're ready to serve them. Again, there's a certain percentage of that list that's going to be happy to do business with you, but if you don't communicate with them, they won't know that, and you might not be on their mind, but if you put yourself on their mind, all of a sudden they're going to say, yeah, I've got some work as a matter of fact, or I want to buy some, or I want to use your services, of course. And the bigger client list you have, obviously the greater opportunity, which comes into your marketing funnel, which we'll talk about uh, probably in the next video, where you want to have a strong market, uh, marketing funnel so that you get that list and that list gets big so that every time you go to it and penetrate it, you get all the business you want. The premise of my coaching and the premise of, of, of what I teach is there is no such thing as uh, a, a saturated market. It doesn't exist. There is no, no, nobody, no company to this point, even the big ones, are able to saturate a market. It cannot happen. Uh, the reason it cannot happen is because there's always improvement to be had. The customers always turn over. There's always attrition for everyone. And there's always new people coming into the, in, into the world. So there's no such thing as, as being able to penetrate fully a market or saturate a market because it's just it's turning over all the time. So nobody can capture a full market. There's always room for everybody. And again, the ones that win all the time, every time, are the ones that are prepared and have their processes and their procedures down pat. And that starts with your marketing funnel and then your sales funnel. So now I hit up all of my clients in this list saying, hey, I'm open for business, ready to go to work for you, love to do it. There's going to be a, a, a plenty percentage there. Typically, I find about 20, 25% will respond to an aggressive push to get in contact. And now that 25%, about half are going to be willing to do some business. So if I've got the 100, which is obviously just for example, is a, that's a pretty small client list, but I got the 100, I reach out to all of them aggressively, emails, text, calls, I'm going to get in contact with 25 of them, at least right away. And then I know that 12 or so are going to want to do business with me. So let's go back to my example of a construction uh, person. He has 100 people he's done, he's done work for. He reaches out to all of them. Again, 25 will respond right away. 12 say, yes, I got some work for you. No problem having plenty of work even in a time like this. 12 jobs is still a lot of jobs, especially for construction. Probably more work than any one construction company could handle. It'd be a pretty big construction company to handle 12 jobs. Uh, and again, so by penetrating the lead list or by penetrating your customer list, you're able to drum up all the business you want. And I coached a guy this morning. He was all panicked. You know, one of my one of my clients, he's out of Atlanta, and they're a bit on a bit of a lockdown. And we got creative with exactly how we could go about doing this so that he could uh, generate some cash flow because he's kind of hurting. Uh, and he called me back after I, you know, coached him on this probably about three hours later, giggling and really excited that he just gotten three customers to reach back out to him and they all wanted work done. And he was going to be able to get back to work first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, so it's just that quick and that easy once you start once you start doing it right. So the sales funnel, again, has to be something you take very seriously. You cannot be one of these businesses that does not capture your, your client list. And you have to maintain it and you have to, to uh, uh, market to it regularly. Now, how often should you reach out to your client list? Again, in times like this, you know, hey, you need some business, you need some money. Be very aggressive with it. In other times when you're when you're more focused on marketing, at least every two weeks, at least every two weeks. Some people will say once a month, I say no, at least every two weeks. You want to be hitting them with an email, a video, a text, a call, even if it's just to say, hey, we're thinking about you. Hey, we want to make sure the last job we did for you was really good. Customer satisfaction is the number one uh, aspect of customers uh, regard the most, even, you know, uh, when it comes to, you know, you're doing a fantastic job. If you don't follow up and ask them how the job was and how it went, well, then you're going to start losing goodwill with your customers. So part of the cultivating of the, of the customer list and the client list has to do with follow up for customer satisfaction. So I'm going to want to make sure that I'm following up with them constantly, especially on fresh jobs or fresh, fresh things that I've done to be able to make sure that they're happy with it. And if they're not, get that identified quickly. So you can get it fixed quickly so you can keep that goodwill with that customer because you obviously you want to keep your client list uh, uh, intact. So and then from there, every two weeks, you want to hit them. And a lot of times you want to hit them with something educational. You want to hit them with a tip or a trick or a tactic or something they could use or maybe some way to take care of what you provided for them or some way to get something more something more out of it. All kinds of ways that you can get more 
out of uh, your customer by helping them get more out of what you provide. By doing so, again, is going to really help them to get the highest amount of value out of what you provided so that you're able to then uh, service them again and again and again and again. This is really part of the things that most businesses completely miss. Think about it. Do you follow your customers right after the job? And if you do, do you continue to follow up every two weeks? And so the follow-up becomes key because with the follow-up, you're able to make sure that you're always in contact with the customer. The, customer's always, the customer always knows you're there to service them, always know, always know that you're ready, you're providing value to them, and it's a great way to make sure that you cultivate that sales funnel. So right now when times are tough, again, if you haven't done this, you've got to get it done. You've got to get it done right now. And you've got to get cultivating that list and you've got to get pushing on it. And you've got to get in contact with those people. Let them know that you're in business or let them know that you're ready. Now, let's, let's just say you're shut down right now. Let's say you can't do any work right now. Communicate with your customers, right? Still do this because when it opens back up, you want to have a whole bunch of jobs or a whole bunch of sales lined up. You don't want to wait, then it opens up and then start reaching out to people. That'd be foolish. You want to do it in a time like this. So right now would be a perfect time if you're, not able to operate fully, to get your customer list hammered down, get it in a CRM, start the email campaign to it, start texting, start calling. Hey, even if it's just to make sure they're okay, put that goodwill out there. Let them know that as soon as it opens back up, you're going to be back ready to, to, to go, back ready to serve, and then start setting appointments right now. Start setting up appointments and times and scheduling things. Even if you do it for you know later on in, in April or whenever, that's fine. You're going to have jobs waiting for you. You're going to have business waiting for you as soon as it opens back up. So great time right now to, again, take advantage of our opportunity and get our client list hammered down, communicated with, and either start getting jobs right now if you can work, or start lining them up so when when, when, we, when we're through this, you're ready to just hit the ground running. And then, then from there, you're just going to make sure that you always follow up, always provide value, always keep cultivating, cultivating, cultivating. If you do this, trust me, it's a huge part of running a very successful business and controlling your top line revenue with how much sales you do. So that's what I got for today. Next week, we're going to talk about the marketing funnel, and we're going to talk about exactly how to go get fresh leads and warm leads so that we can get new customers to then put into this customer list to keep this bad boy growing. If you have your marketing funnel really rocking and rolling and new leads are coming in, and you're getting fresh sales, and you're really cultivating your client lists the proper way, then imagine the power in that. This is why larger companies have very predictable models when it comes to their revenue streams and ultimately their profitability. Most small and mid-sized businesses completely miss this, completely miss it. You're not going to be one of those. We're going to make sure that you're high and tight. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. I really enjoy this. I hope you got some good value out of it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share all the great things uh, to get it out there. Comment. I'd like to see some comments on the YouTube uh, 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 video. So if, if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, hit me with some questions. I'm going to look at all those questions. Hit me with some questions on the sales funnel. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And then we'll get pushing this information out for everybody. Hey, we're all in this together right now. We got to help each other. It's not a time to be greedy. It's not a time to, to have ulterior motives. Right now is the time to come together, share our knowledge so that we can all win and beat this thing, not only for right now, but as we move out of this, it's imperative. We got to do it. Thank you so much. See you guys on the next one.